We concentrated on trafficking in the area of domestic work and we looked at seven European countries and compared them among them, uh, speaking with NGOs, speaking with trade unions, also looking at legal cases. Well, domestic work is a very special sector. So first of all, usually the trafficker and the victim know each other from before. Sometimes it's even family arranged, like uh, fostering a child or an arranged marriage. Uh, what's involved is not so much exploitation for profit, but it's deception. Very poor conditions of, uh, very poor conditions of work and life. Um, it's usually not physical abuse, but psychological abuse. I think what was striking in our findings was that it was not just cultural issues that sometimes people say, oh, it's racism, it's, it's dealing with somebody else as if they are inferior. Uh, there is also economic motivation, getting 24-hour service for nearly nothing. So we were looking at supply chains specifically. We looked at initiatives to address trafficking, forced labour or slavery within supply chains. Um, we did desk-based re research which identified 97 initiatives in this area and we attempted to classify those by who was involved, uh, what industries they covered, where they applied, and the mechanisms by which they work. And we complemented that with three uh, field-based case studies on electronics in Malaysia, agriculture in the US, and construction in Qatar. So we found that there's quite a lot of activity within the field of corporate social responsibility in which trafficking, forced labor, and slavery is being added to existing policies. So there's a lot of attempts to incorporate this into existing initiatives which cover, cover labor rights or human rights to define the terms, to learn how to identify them in practice. Um, but that we see as just a preliminary step. So we found some other initiatives that were more, more promising in terms of changing relationships within supply chains. So what we have done is a comparative study on the, what demand side measures there are in three different countries, Sweden, Germany and New Zealand. And we have also done a client study with uh, people who purchase sex in Sweden, where it's illegal to purchase sex. And thirdly, we have developed a new framework in uh, how to talk about prostitution policies, talking about repressive, restrictive and integrative prostitution regimes. We have three main recommendations. One is trafficking in domestic work is like a slippery slope. So you go from a lot of exploitation to slave-like conditions to trafficking. So we need to tackle the overall framework. Second, I think we need to raise awareness among employers. Employers in domestic work are families, households. Um, they need to be aware of their obligations. They need to be aware that some services cannot be uh, paid at a very low price. Um, they need to be aware of sanctions. Uh, third, we need enforcement. We need to uh, put, bring in labour inspectorates. Some countries like Belgium that have done this have seen really important results. Of course, we need to inform domestic workers. So we need monitoring, we need information to the workers, uh, we need access to NGOs. So if something goes wrong, they know where to turn to. The recommendations are very much at a broad level. So we're thinking about principles in terms of how to intervene in the field of trafficking, forced labor, and slavery in relation to supply chains. So the recommendations are, uh, first of all, about responsibility. The lead firms need to take responsibility for transforming labor conditions in their supply chains. Second, about enforceability, that we shouldn't have more initiatives without enforcement mechanisms, without some way in which there is a sanction or an incentive uh, to make these initiatives work. The third is worker participation. So we think that the so we think that unions and other workers organizations should be involved from the outset. The initiatives will be more effective if workers are involved in designing, implementing and enforcing them. And finally, the role of public regulation. So the broader context of labor rights and migrants' rights matters for addressing trafficking, forced labor and slavery in supply chains. It's really important when policymakers look at developing measures against exploitation and trafficking that they understand what sort of context they are operating within. Is it a repressive regime? 
Is it a restrictive regime? Is it an integrative regime? So policymakers need to look at what can be done within their policy regime to enhance and strengthen sex workers and other actors in the industry, how they can collaborate with, with authorities to combat exploitation and trafficking. Certain um, measures that can work in all policy regimes, such as uh, empowering the community or uh, decreasing stigma, then there are certain policy, policy measures that can only work, for instance, in an integrative approach that is strengthening labour laws. When policymakers uh, want to develop measures against trafficking in the sex industry, they need to uh, really look at how can they collaborate with the stakeholders, with the sex workers and with other, uh, other actors in the industry.